What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Love After Lockup Season 4, Episode 40, Wedding Rings and Secret Flings. And this is the season finale. Next week, we get into Life After Lockup, and I'm really looking forward to that because the previews for that look uh, quite interesting. So let's start off with Michael and Justine. So they're back at the house after they had this big blow up argument in the car about Justine telling her mom that she was pregnant without Michael being there about uh, Michael being late to the dinner so they couldn't tell the mother together so they were arguing they were arguing about that in the car a really nasty argument so now they're back on at home they're a little bit more calm now and they're having a conversation calmly and Michael is explaining himself that it was really important that they tell the mother together at the same time. And Justine tells him, well, that could have happened if you were there on time. And Michael explains to her that, look, I was at the studio and I really cannot control when I can leave because we have to keep doing the songs until the song is perfect. So it was out of my control when I was able to finally leave. And she's like, you know, I understand all of that, but you also got to understand that my mom, you know, she pried this information out of me, which her mom in my opinion, did not pry the information out of her because they were having a casual conversation about children. And I think they were talking about, you know, Justine having more kids and um, her mother, I told her, well, don't have any more children until the time is right. And then Justine tells her mom, well, the time is right, right now, as in I'm pregnant right now. And I think that's how she told her mom. Her mom wasn't trying to pry it out of her, trying to um, pressure her into telling her or, and it was co or into telling it was nothing like that so I don't know why Justine lied at lied to Michael like that but anyways moving on from there so she apologizes and he goes well if your mom knows we might as well also tell the children so she's okay with that and then she says you know we're also gonna have to tell your family too pretty soon and he's really hesitant about telling his family that Justine's pregnant over the phone because he had to tell his mom that he was getting married over the phone and now he has to tell his mom that he's expecting a child with Justine over the phone and he wants to tell his mom in person and Justine says well by the time that you're able to leave the state of Pennsylvania which is in two months your mom is probably going to be upset that we withheld this information for so long from her so we might as well just tell her now because we don't want her to get mad you know this whole entire time that we're talking to her communicating with her you know I'm pregnant and we're not telling her yeah, she's not going to like that. So we might as well just tell her now. So to tell the children, they decide to take them to get ice cream. And they go to the ice cream parlor and everybody sits down at the table. Everybody has their ice cream and they have an extra bowl of ice cream. And Michael tells the kids, this extra bowl of ice cream is for the baby. And he kind of like moves the bowl close to Justine's stomach. And so the youngest child had no reaction. The middle child was like literally shocked. He even like sat up in his chair and he was like, oh my God, you're going to have a baby. And her oldest child, her daughter looked crushed. So they asked her, are you going to have a boy or a girl? Or do you want a boy or a girl? And Justine was like, well, I think I want a girl because I want to be able to do things with her that I never got to do with Kylie because, you know, she was so young and she was in school and et cetera. So when she said that Kylie felt some kind of way like, oh, okay. So this is kind of like a do over for you. All the things that you couldn't do with me, you're going to do now with the baby. Kind of like, you know, she felt like she was, you know, shortchanged or cheated. Like all the fun stuff is going to be with the baby that you couldn't do with me. And so Justine pulls Kylie to the side and lets her know look it's not like a do-over or anything like that you know you'll always be special to me and me and you have a very special relationship and I love you in a way that I don't even love your brothers not that I love them any less but the love that I have for you is a different kind of love and you will always be special to me and we'll always have our special bond and you know Kylie just feels really bad that she feels like she's losing her mom more and more you know she had to share her mom with uh, Michael now there's going to be this new baby there and you know she's like I'm going to be moving on with my life going to college or doing whatever she's going to be doing after high school and she really wants her mom there and this baby might prevent that from happening you know her mom is going to be tethered to this new baby and not able to do all the things that you know Kylie wants her to do with her when she starts her own life and um, Kylie tells her mom that it's a lot happening really fast. And I was like, come on, Kylie, tell your mom what's going on. Because it is. And I don't know if these adults ever stop to think that this is, you know, how are the kids handling all of these changes? And I also wonder to myself, like, what do Mike's children think? I know they're kind of young, but what do Mike's children think? He does have a teenage daughter, though. 
He does have older kids, I think. What do they think that their father, who they've been away from for like six years, comes home from prison and immediately goes to live with a whole nother family and gives his time and attention to these other children that they don't even know? Like, how are his kids processing all of this? And he even said that his children told him to not have any more kids. They don't want to share him anymore with anybody else. And it's like, I know it has to be hard for his kids. And I know it's hard for her kids. All of these kids are going through this. And like, are the adults even thinking about the things that are doing that are affecting these children obviously not the adults are selfish they want what they want because what should have happened when Mike got released from prison he should have been paroled in Rhode Island for one reason and one reason only to spend more time with his children not to try to hurry up get married to Justine just so that he can be paroled in Pennsylvania and live with her and her kids I mean that's whack that's absolutely whack and I know his kids live with their moms and it's not, it's not like he would be seeing them every single day but he would be seeing them a whole lot more than being away from them for two whole months because he cannot leave Pennsylvania for 60 days so it's just and then Coming to find out when we get into life after lockup, it seems like they're going to be moving to Las Vegas. I mean, are you taking your other kids with you? Like, what is going on here, Michael? You've been away from your kids for six years and you have small children and you have, you no know, teenagers that need you. And you're like, <sighs> anyways, it. it Michael get it together and I hope to God that somehow or another you're going to be taking your other kids with you and, and that's I know that sounds crazy because these kids have been raised by their mothers their mothers have stepped up as mom and dad for them because he's out there fooling around in the streets getting incarcerated but like so what are you going to do with these other kids that you have your own biological children you're just going to forget about them in Rhode Island while you start this new life with Justine and her kids and your new baby in Las Vegas like what's really going on but maybe I'm rushing to judgment I need to just zip it until we see life after lockup so now it's time to tell his mom that Justine's pregnant. So they FaceTime the mother and they're in the living room and her kids are also around. And um, so when the mom gets on the phone, he asks his mom, you know, are you happy that I'm out? And the mom is like, yeah, of course, I'm happy that you're out. And then he says, well, keep that feeling, mom, because we've got something to tell you. Justine's pregnant. And the mom was like, what? Are you kidding me? And then Mike kind of got defensive and he was like, what do you mean? Are we kidding you? Why would we joke about this? Mike, relax. This is a natural reaction for people when you tell them something very shocking. I mean, the mom literally does not think that it's a joke. She knows you're telling her the truth, but like she's flabbergasted. So it's, it's kind of natural for people to be like, are you kidding me? But he was like, yeah, of course I'm, of course I'm not kidding. You. Why would we be kidding you? Uh, this isn't a joke. So the mom is like, well, this happened really, really quickly because Mike, you've only been home like about two weeks and now she's pregnant. And um, the mom says in Spanish, you know, can I talk to you alone? And Mike was like, no, we're not going to do that Spanish stuff. You're going to talk in English and whatever you want to say to me, you can say in front of Justine. So the grandmother says, are you going to get a DNA test, a paternity test? And Justine got so upset, she left. And Mike was like, who do you think you are? Mari Povich, Jerry Springer? And I'm like, Mike, relax. OK, first of all, Mike, you need to check yourself. This is your mother. I know that your mom is a little bit rough around the edges, but this is still your mom. You cannot be talking to your mom like that because this is too soon. <laughs> this is too soon. You're crazy. Y'all are crazy. Y'all got too much going on. You're getting married. You're moving in and invading these children's privacy. Your kids are in a whole nother state, not seeing you. And now you're having a baby. You know, you've been out two or three weeks or whatever, whatever the hell it is. And now you're going to be expecting another baby. She quit her damn job. You're trying to rely on a hope and a dream of your music career taking off don't talk to your mom like that when she's trying to knock some sense into you. This is too soon, Mike. Like, do you not, do these people not realize what the hell is going on? Or are they so busy living in the clouds, living in fairy tale land, you know, imagining how their life could be. And that's what they're focused on. And they're not living in reality of what life actually is. She quit her job. You have yet to release anything as far as I know, as far as your music goes. You're still, you know, uh, laying down beats in uh, uh, little Jacob's basement over there. No, this. 
your mom is right. This is too much. And maybe the mom is thinking that maybe because it happened so fast, Justine was already pregnant before Mike even, uh, was released. I don't know. But the mom was like, you need to get a DNA test. So Mike tells us in his confessional that the mom feels this way because her brother raised a kid for many years that ended up not being his. So she's got like a phobia or a paranoia of this happening to happening again to her son. And he says that he got all of his other kids tested um, without his consent, without their mother's consent. She was just swabbing everybody like she was doing COVID tests to make sure that these grandkids were her biological grandchildren. So after he gets off the phone with his mother, he goes into the kitchen with Justine and Justine was like, is she really going to make me do a DNA test? And Mike was like, she's not going to make you, but she's going to get one done one way or another. And Justine was like, well, she can do whatever she wants because I know this baby's yours. And so, you know, that makes them feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And so they kiss and hug and, you know, all see in their own little bubble, everything is perfect while there is like absolute chaos and destruction all around them. Let's move on now to some more mess, Derek and Monique. So Monique is about to go back home to Chicago. And so Derek wants to celebrate with a big picnic with his family because he wants his father's side there his mother's side there so him and Monique they get all the fixings at the grocery store and I thought it was kind of adorable when they were at the self-checkout and he puts the card in I guess because he's been gone for a while he doesn't know how to op he didn't know how to do the the chip thing on the credit card he was like is this how you do it <laughs> anyways moving on so they get all the food they get to the park um, start setting up the barbecue his father shows up big ma shows up his auntie show up and you know they're barbecuing still no siblings uh they're eating still no siblings they're done eating still no siblings hours have gone by by now and the siblings still have not shown up and um Derek says this is exactly how my my uh, siblings are my sisters are when I was in prison they were never there for me very inconsistent did not support me um so I'm used to this so big mall she was like okay I'm 94 years old and I gotta go to bed <laughs> I'm tired. I gotta go. I didn't plan on being at the park, you know, for seven, eight hours. So big ma, daddy, auntie, they leave. Uh, Monique and Derek, they clear up all the food, clean up everything, pack everything back in the car. And as they're backing out of the parking lot, the siblings show up. They, they get out of their car. And um, they're knocking on the window like, hey, what's going on? What's going on is that you're 10 hours late and we're going back to the hotel. That's what's going on. And so Monique, you know, she actually, I think she wanted to like talk to them or exchange words with them. And Derek was like, no, just keep on. Let's go. Let's go. Reverse it. Back it out. Let's go. So one of the sisters, you know, acts like she got ran over. You know, she thought it was real funny, but you're wasting time. We got to go. So they back out. They're on the highway. They're out of there. And one of the producers producers calls Monique or yeah she calls Monique and she's like you know where are you at and I think they're trying to catch up to Monique because Monique was gone and the producer didn't even have time to catch up with them and so I think Monique was going to pull over to wait for the producers and Derek didn't want her to I guess he was worried about the sisters catching up to him catching up to them so he was like no don't pull over don't pull over but she pulled over anyway he got mad he was yelling at her screaming at her she's yelling back screaming at him they're calling each other names you know it gets really nasty between them um he gets upset he's like you know what I'm gonna just uber it back to the hotel so he leaves he gets out gets his stuff and he goes back to the hotel the producers are riding with her and you can tell that she's extremely extremely bothered okay she's very bothered because she gets really quiet so the producers are like so is this really over between y'all she was like I don't know I don't know I don't know you know it's like you know she then she talks about how she doesn't know if she can be with someone who can treat her so bad it don't really matter what she's saying because you feel like there's a glimmer of hope that maybe you know she's come to her senses because you know we know that he's cheating on her so we're hoping there's gonna be like a glimmer of hope that she's coming to her senses when she's talking into the camera like I don't know about this you know he doesn't treat me right I, I deserve better but we've seen the clips from life after lockup and we know they're still together so whatever she was talking about it don't really matter so she's back in Chicago and she found out that Derek was cheating on her and um she found out because the girl contacted her and sent her videos and pictures of Derek at her house and so she's you would think that okay I'm getting evidence that he's cheating on me I held him down in prison I spent all this money on him so it's over I'm gonna cut off cut him off my phone plan I'm gonna 
cut him off everything it's I'm breaking up with him but no in her confessional which we know the confessionals are done way after they're done filming in her confessional um she facetimes him or he facetimes her and no she facetimes him I think and she's like where you at he's like well I'm just I'm just out eating and she's like I know you're with somebody turn that phone around 360 and he tried not to he acted like he was but he really wasn't and she caught a glimpse of a whole nother plate next to him so she knew that he was out with another woman so she gets all upset about him being with another woman and she tells him you know when I see you I swear I swear on my daughter I'm gonna beat you up and I was like daughter how did I miss that did y'all know she had a daughter? I had no clue. I thought she was, you know, living this clownish life alone. But she's got a whole kid and she's acting like this. Monique, you're a parent and you're running around cross country chasing this man who is cheating on you. And, and you have a whole daughter in Chicago. Like what's going on? But she says, I swear on my, I think she said daughter. Maybe I misheard. So yeah, he's cheating on her. She finds out she's upset, threatening to beat him, threatening to beat him up, all kinds of nonsense when, you know, she really should have just broken up with him, but you know, she can't let go. He can't let go. It's all a hot mess. Let's move on to Cameron and Eris. So it's Eris's last day. She's getting ready to leave. She woke up, packed up, dressed up, ready to go. And Eris is, I mean, Cameron is still knocked out on the couch. Um, he can't even get up to you know tell her goodbye so she goes downstairs and when he finally gets up he calls her he's like where are you at she says I'm downstairs having coffee he follows her down there they're having a discussion she's really upset with how he acted the night before so she tells him look if we're going to be together you cannot do that again I don't want you drinking it's a bad example for my kid so you need to understand that you need to set a better example for her and I don't want you going back to prison so you need to straighten up and he's like you know what it was just a one-time thing I'm celebrating with my family you know I'm out I'm free I'm just celebrating I've been locked up for 30 months it was just me having a good time with my family that's all that was this is not my everyday life and plus you're not going to tell me what I can and cannot do because I just came out of prison where all they did was tell me what I could and couldn't do I'm a free man I'm a grown man and you're not going to put me in a damn box but in his confessional he says that because Eris is his wife he's willing to compromise with her yeah I know I know I know you're willing to compromise <laughs> because Eris looks like she don't play yeah I know you're going to be compromising a whole hell of a lot so she finally gives him back his ring and I thought it was a kind of a good sign that he wanted his ring back so bad um he didn't know what the hell he did with it he forgot that he threw it at her the night before so she gives him his ring back and she says to him this was never supposed to leave your finger to begin with and so hopefully um he does better but we know how these stories end right good luck to you Eris. moving on to Travis and Ashley so they finally move in with um Travis's mom um in her basement and they're all moved in as soon as they show up on at the house the mother runs out gives her son a big old hug apologizes to her son about telling him that he shouldn't marry Ashley she takes it all back she says you can do whatever you want to do if y'all get married tomorrow I'll be happy for you I'll support you I'm so sorry that I was all up in your business like that because Ashley was ready to confront the mom she was like I want to understand why you're telling your grown 44 year old son what he should and shouldn't do with his life life and so the mom was like girl don't worry about that I'm not like that no more y'all can do whatever y'all want to do I just want to welcome y'all into my beautiful home and blah 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 and I support y'all but in her confessional the mom is like I'm the queen bee of this house I'm the only one that wears the crown so Ashley needs to step on back wow so then the next time that we see Ashley and Travis are in the bed and um she asks him are you in a good mood and he's like yeah why and she goes okay because I've got something to tell you I'm late and he's like Late for what? Dinner? Movie? What? No, I'm late. I'm three weeks late. My period. I haven't seen it in three weeks. And he's like, what? <laughs> Why are we saying what? Okay, you know how you got here. Why are we saying what? You know, um, you declined the prophylactics and all the other safe methods. Why are we saying what? So he's like, is this normal for you? Like, is it because you're stressed out? And she's like, no, I've never, ever, ever, not once in my life in my, you know, 38 years have I ever missed a period. No, mm -mm, that's never happened before. But I bought pregnancy tests and he's like, what the hell are you doing laying down in the damn bed? Go take the damn test, girl. So she gets up, she takes the test. Thank God it's negative. And they're both relieved. 
And yeah, thank God, because y'all have nothing. <laughs> y'all have nothing. You have no money, no home, no car, n- nothing. Y'all have nothing. So the tests are negative. They're all relieved. And she seems to be a little bit optimistic about their future because she talks about how she wants to do things the right way. You know, she wants to get engaged first, you know, get their own home, get married, establish their relationship, establish their lives, have income coming in, then possibly thinking about babies, but definitely not now. And him on the other hand he was like you know I love Ashley I know she's really been there for me but the love is very strained right now because we have no income coming in and that puts a lot of stress in our relationship so yeah that was I mean they dodged a huge huge bullet a huge bullet um, but at your age, Ashley, I mean, I don't know. Are you premenopausal now? Like, cause I don't think that, I don't believe that Ashley's 38 years old. I don't care what damn what nobody said. I do not believe that Ashley is 38 years old. Moving on to Derek and Mo. Oh, we already talked about Derek and Monique. Moving on to Nathan and Skylar. Okay. Nathan and Skylar, not much happened there. They are, it's Halloween. They, and they invite they invite a whole bunch of friends over and um nathan's brother and cousin and whatnot and they go to a haunted trail and nathan planned on proposing to skylar and um he talks to his brother his brother's like hell no he talks to skylar's best friend about it the best friend's like hell no so then he changes his mind he doesn't propose to her at all so that was the end of love after lockup now the updates as far as nathan and skylar supposedly they're still together and they are planning they're, they're trying to find a place of their own and hopefully they're also trying to find a therapist because they need it they need it bad they need it for their addictions they need it for their relationship Nathan definitely needs it for anger management I hope they're also looking for a therapist as far as Derek and Monique the update on them Derek is trying to win Monique over I mean, to win Monique back. I guess she did temporarily break up with him. He's trying to get his woman back. And Mo, Monique, she is definitely going to be coming back to Ohio because we saw the preview of that in Life After Lockup, that she does return back to Ohio. Travis and Ashley broke up, okay? Um, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if she knocked down the crown from his mother's head or what, but the pressures of living under his mother's roof was too much. So they ended up breaking up. They are no longer together. Ashley is just trying to enjoy her life as a single woman. Michael and Justine, they teased us with, you know, um, that they're planning this really big move and they're waiting for their baby, which is due in seven months. So, but we saw in life after lockup, it looked like they were moving to Las Vegas. And like I said, what about your kids, Michael? You're moving to Las Vegas, but what about your children in Rhode Island? What's going on there? And, um, Justine, your kids, you moving them away from their fathers? Like, or do they not have a relationship with like, what is going on? But we'll find out in life after lockup. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Um, for all of y'all that have watched my reviews on Life Love After Lockup, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Um, the comments, uh, the likes, the dislikes, I really do appreciate the fact that you take time out of your day to give me any kind of feedback. Um, I love it with, from the bottom of my heart. I do. And I hope that you join me back again next Friday for the beginning of Life After Lockup. And on your way out, don't forget to rate this video. If you like this content, please go ahead and subscribe and I will definitely talk to you later. Bye.